Hi there and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be taking the first steps towards rejuvenating this very old wild collected olive. If you find the following content helpful then you can thank me by clicking the thanks button just below the video. According to the owner of this tree, it belonged to Rudy Adam, who is now deceased and was part of his private collection. If you're not familiar with who Rudy Adam was, he was one of the forerunners of bonsai in South Africa. So aside from the many attractive qualities that this tree possesses, which I will highlight in a moment, it also has a great degree of provenance. One of the qualities of this tree that is very appealing to me is the very tapering trunk line. Presumably this tree was collected in the Western Cape of South Africa. And we usually find bases like this on olives on trees which are extremely old and growing in very arid areas. The treatment of the canopy is very natural and very sympathetic to the way that wild olives actually grow in this part of the country considering that we have no snowfall and so the branches tend to grow outwards and up towards the sunlight. Unfortunately, there are quite a few branches which have died. As it's very difficult to tell the dead and alive branches apart at this stage, I've decided to retain all of them until a later time, at which point I will remove those which are clearly dead. As the tree was in a weakened state, there were a number of insects and other pests which took advantage of the situation. After treating the tree several times with bio-neem or neem oil and other products, I was able to get the white fly and mold problems under control. I'm very encouraged to see the amount of new juvenile growth which the tree has pushed out this spring and it is with this growth that I'll be rebuilding the ramification. There are also quite a few flower buds which are developing right throughout the canopy. I believe the root of the issues that are witnessed in this tree, the dieback and various other problems, is as a result of poor soil. This tree has been in my care for the last few months and since I've had it, I've probably only watered it maybe two or three times. This excessive water retention is as a result of the very high organic content that it has. Repotting this tree will be the first step towards rejuvenating it. A repotting sickle is one of my most loved repotting tools. The serrated edge enables you to cut through roots and especially in trees that are pot bound where the roots are growing right up against the container wall. Using the repotting sickle enables you to create a narrow gap between the root ball and the side of the container and this makes it easier for you to remove the tree by lifting it out of the pot. Be sure to cut the tie down wires before attempting to lift the tree from the container. Be careful when choosing the point where you will apply pressure to lift the tree out, especially in old trees like this where you have a lot of fissured bark, you don't want to remove that. Carefully lift the tree from the container and set it aside until later. Before beginning to work on the root ball of the tree, I'm first going to prepare the container as this will mean that the roots are exposed for the minimum amount of time. The first step in preparing the container will be to thoroughly wash it, removing all organic material. If you suspect that Phytophthora was present or root rot, then it's a good idea to also treat the container with spore kill or alternatively hydrogen peroxide. Next, I'm going to cover the large drainage holes with mesh, which will prevent the growing medium from falling out. To ensure that the drainage mesh does not move from their positions, I'm going to secure them in place using wire. The wire must make contact with the sides of the drainage holes, otherwise the mesh can move around and will allow soil to drain out. Flip the pot over and then bend the wire ends over the lip. I will now prepare the wire that I'm going to use to secure and tie the tree down into the container. The next step is to wash the root ball. 
Washing the root ball of a bonsai tree is not something that I would recommend that you do too frequently and certainly never with any conifer. However, it is my objective to completely change the type of soil that this tree will be growing in going forward. I also have prior experience to rely upon where I've done this on other olives and they have performed very well after repotting. The soil mix appears to be made up of a lot of organic material, sand and then also very coarse stone and stone chips. Using coarse stone to retain the structure in a growing medium is a good idea, however it makes no sense when you then fill the cavities between the stone with fine material which is unsifted. I was very relieved upon close inspection of the roots not to find any evidence of root rot, which would be blackened roots which are rotting. Long roots like this which do not ramify is another indication of a soil medium that is too water retentive. If you want to achieve trees with a high degree of ramification, you're going to have to encourage a much finer fibrous root system. As there aren't actually too many roots to cut, I'm going to keep the root work to a minimum and only shorten those very long roots. I will also take advantage of this opportunity to remove some weeds which I've been struggling to control. With the pot prepared and the roots trimmed, I'm now ready to continue with the repotting. As I wish to promote a lot of new growth on this tree, I'm going to be using a very open structured soil mix. To be more precise, the mix consists of equal parts of akadama, pumice and lava stone. The growing medium is intentionally piled towards the center of the container so that once the tree is placed on top of it, there can be very little chance of any cavities below the root ball. The technique then of course is to wiggle the tree backwards and forwards. You keep working the tree until it is at the correct planting depth. Check the position of the tree in the container. Ideally, you want to provide equal space at the back and the front of the tree for roots to develop. After you've confirmed that the tree's angle and position in the container is satisfactory, you can then find suitable anchor points for the wire. If you're using aluminium as the material of your tie-down wires, you will need to practice caution when twisting this wire. Aluminium wire shears very easily. As a result, a better technique is to pull and twist the wire at the same time, rather than relying purely on twisting the wire to create a tightened and strong hold on the tree. After thoroughly securing the tree in the container, you can now add more growing medium. Then begins the very important task of making sure that all cavities or air pockets are eliminated from amongst the root system and is filled with growing media. The soil level is going to drop as you chopstick it amongst the cavities and so when necessary just top up the soil with more. When you're done working the soil in amongst the roots and there is excess soil then remove it with a small broom. You'll want the soil level to be about half a centimeter below the rim of the container which will give you some space to add your top dressing as well as act as a slight reservoir. The final step will be to use the spatula side of a tool to compact the soil slightly. Before applying my top dressing I'm going to thoroughly water the tree. And it's especially important with this first watering to make sure that the water runs clear from the drainage holes. Next I'm going to apply my top dressing. If you're not sure how to make your own top dressing, I'm going to add a link to that video that I made. With the top dressing now applied, I'm going to water the tree again. As the moss is completely dry, it will be dislodged very easily by full force of water, so carefully water it first and then afterwards increase the intensity of the watering.
If you found that content helpful and you'd like to thank me for it, please do so now by clicking the thanks button just below the video. Repotting of this old olive tree is now completed. At first I'm going to position this tree in a sheltered and part sun position so that it is not going to be exposed to any extremes but my intention would be to move it into a full sun position as soon as possible and as soon as the growth of the tree allows for that. Thanks for joining me, please do subscribe and until next time take care, goodbye.